Unique New York. Unique New York. A tarantula enjoys fine chewing gum. The arsonist had oddly shaped feet. Who is this guy? You might be wondering. <laughs> it's Anthony Chavira. And um, luckily, I actually got a haircut. I didn't know he was coming until last night, but this guy gets a haircut. What do you say? Every 24 hours? Every 48 hours? Every uh, 72 hours. You know, you got to stay fresh for the cheeky babies. If uh, it ain't easy. It isn't. And uh, when you own a Polaris, you know, you just got to look good. So <laughs> I stay fresh. It is what it is. You know, it's busting. Busting, as, as my kids say. As, as my kids, kids say. Yep. What's happening, everybody? It's Nick Olson, special guest, Anthony Chavira, a.k.a. Living Chavita Loca. Mm. Live, first unofficial Chupacabra Fireside chat Yeah, without the fire. Yeah, I'm very excited. This is last minute, like Nick said. Uh, luckily, he got a haircut because he looks pretty gross when he doesn't get one. Uh, but yeah, freaking, we drove up here to Phoenix out of nowhere. Uh, shout out to my boy Danny for always getting my back. And we're here now live from the Chupacabra headquarters. But it's a big day. It's a big topic. Yesterday, huge release from Can-Am. So we're talking about the Can-Am Maverick R release. Um, yeah. Anthony and I uh, met a couple of years ago. He's been doing his thing, been a long-time off-roader. I'll go ahead and uh, introduce him. Uh, resides in Yuma, Arizona. He's a bike nerd like me, too. Have a lot in <laughs> common. Just did a 500-mile Baja ride a few weeks ago. Known more as a Dooner, I guess I'd say. But why don't you tell the people, if they're not familiar, your background on off-road. Yeah, so uh, like Nick said, been doing this my whole life. Uh, I think I started when I was three years old. My dad got me a little 50, a little Yamaha. He put some training wheels on there, and kind of funny, I learned how to ride on a dirt bike before I actually even knew how to ride a bicycle. Um, so been doing bikes, quads, dirt bikes, sand rails. My dad builds off-road cars. Uh, so I've been doing that my whole life. And, yeah, at some point, Nick and I crossed paths. I've been following him since uh, his old 1000 or his old turbo days. And we finally linked up after a couple of years. And, um, yeah, we're here now enjoying some Baja rides and some awesome content. Uh, and, yeah, we're here to talk about this new Can-Am because there's a lot to talk about. That's that's why we're here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you guys have seen uh, some of my content, probably some of Anthony's too. Um, we worked together almost two years ago, Camp Razor, we 2021. Did. He talked himself into driving my Can Am. I'd have to talk my myself speed into Baja. it. Baja. This guy like talks himself into driving <laughs> all my cars. He's like the only person. Uh, but we, uh, you know, I'd heard of him. I knew he was like a good dooner. And then we dooned together. And I was like, yeah. man, him and his, your brother, brother your, your yeah. dad, your yeah. boys, your whole crew. You guys, you know, get down. Yeah. So I think videos never do anything justice. You know, like we go out and ride the mountain bikes and things like that. And people are like, oh, you know, that little drop looks like whatever. Or we go out to the dunes. Oh, they're going 40, 50 miles an hour. It's not a big deal. But I always like to take people with us because I think that's when people truly appreciate, like, how fast or how much we push it. Um, pretty much as fast as we can go safely. Um, and, yeah, I was really stoked when you were able to join me or whatever on that dune ride because I was like, damn, how, how cool is this? I mean, you're a big deal, you know, to us in the Southwest and Yuma. I think Chupacabra, I mean, I want to say 99 out of 100 cars have your mirrors. So uh, for me to be able to be linked up with you and stuff like that, it's 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 pretty badass in my opinion. So, yeah, when I was able to lead you guys on a dune ride, I was I was stoked. That was cool. That was fun. That was a fun time. <laughs> um, thanks for the, the kind words, too. It's cool yeah. to work with people who you see are putting in the effort. Um, the amount of content you've been putting out for years and you can tell you're just authentic and you're passionate about the lifestyle. So as a brand, I've always tried to associate with a couple of people that we really believe in. It's been fun getting to know you in, in Baja and uh, shotgun to beer challenge. What was that uh, yeah. nasty? It was like a Amstel or? Yeah. So it's like basically the Mexican, um, Mick uh, ultra. Mick, yeah, <laughs> ultra and yeah, Nick had been talking all this game and stuff and I saw him get spanked uh, by Nathan McBride. So I knew it wasn't going to be no big deal. So, we sp I spanked Nick, I spanked Nick, and then uh, I also uh, shut down our boy Fred. You know, yeah. And Fred's a big dude, man. He has a big ass neck, so <laughs> he should have been able to shotgun that beer, but he's trash. All right, Fred, <laughs> rematch. Uh, rematch. Shotgun yep. challenge coming up. Soon. Sancho. Yeah. Oh, maybe Sancho. Okay. <laughs> so let's get into the mean potatoes. Maverick, our new top dog. We've heard rumors for a while. Can Am's always been really good at keeping their release close to their chest. There were some patent drawings that came out a while ago. We thought, yeah. no way. Um, I've heard these rumors of the DCT for a while. I didn't know it was going to happen. I didn't know what power plant. So I'm going to rattle off some of the stats, and then uh, Anthony's going to fill you all in on, on his thoughts, and we'll just kind of 
go back and forth. So let's start off with what Can Am's always been known for. Speed. Horsepower. Yep. Motor. Yep. Rotax. Yep. Runs amazing. Um, they went with a 999 CC, putting out 240 horse DCT seven speed trans. So first question, Anthony, are you surprised they kept it under a thousand given what Polaris has done? I, I want to answer that question like yes and no, uh, because Polaris, sorry, because Polaris did, you know, drop a 2.0, basically a, a motor that you can get out of a Honda Civic or Ecotec, whatever. Yeah, you would think that Can-Am would, you know, boom, drop a 2.5 or something. But at the same time, I'm not surprised because Can-Am, they put out uh, products that make amazing power. So I feel they don't need to go with a big displacement motor. Um you know, if that size works for them, they did slap on, I believe, a 55 millimeter turbo, which the turbos on my race car and my GTR are like 52 millimeters. So, Dang. yeah, I mean, I have two, but still it's a big size turbo, you know. Um, so Can-Am knows what they're doing in terms of speed and, and, and uh, what they're trying to accomplish with that. So I'm like, yes and no surprise. I don't know if that even really answers that question. Well, you're a car guy. Um, that's out of my realm. Turbos, turbo size. Another feature, the anti-lag. So yeah. that sounds like a really cool bit of technology. So one of the cylinders comes down. They change the timing. Because they run a bigger turbo, bigger turbos and, uh, uh, essentially take more time to get going, right? Correct. So, Yeah, so that's that's awesome engineering. I mean, that's badass, honestly. I don't know how all that fancy stuff works but yeah turbo lag i also do like uh, that they basically bolted the turbo straight up to the block so the further the turbo is from the motor the more laggy it's going to be so it being hooked up basically directly to the block i mean that's going to be virtually like no lag um plus you know that technology that you mentioned so i think it's gonna be a ripper man i mean it i i'm gonna just go out on a limb and, and assume that ken am's gonna smoke the pro r i mean i've never had any doubts about that um i think polaris doesn't care too much about that i think polaris cares for like an all-around vehicle um and can-am is just boom let's get it i'm gonna beat you from a to b so uh i'm excited i'm excited to check it out um, um to see them see them in person see what they do see them take glamis um I'm, I'm stoked you know every time a manufacturer puts out a new vehicle and stuff like that it's just continuing to raise the bar whether, you know, good or bad, you know, like, <laughs> I think there's a lot of bad with this new Can-Am and I think other manufacturers... We'll get into that. I think other manufacturers can look at it and say, like, I'm definitely not going that route. Um, and then there's going to there's gonna be some pros about it, too, you know, so... All right. So, already, Anthony's making claims it's going to smoke the par. <laughs> so, all we really know are some of the numbers, right? Obviously, we haven't driven these things yet. Correct. So, I spit out the first number, 240 horse. So, we're talking 15 horse more than a pro R. So, Can-Am's always been really lightweight. <clears throat> the old X3 was 1,600 pounds. Yeah. This big girl, the top dog version, 2,250 pounds. So now we go from the lightest car in the class to it's actually 73, 75-ish pounds heavier than a comparable 2C Pro R. So uh, you sound pretty bold smoking a Pro R because the Pro R in the race mode, it gets it. Yeah. Um, and now I, you know... It, we're talking drag race or seat of the pants, that type of thing in the sand, et cetera. Power to weight's a huge deal. Not something that the Can-Am guys love. I imagine too, if you're like back East and you're, you're zipping through trees, like that squirty fast feel is a huge, uh, hugely attributed to the lightweight. So um, what would you think about that? How do you think that plays out? Yeah. It's funny when the pro R dropped, you know, everybody was so quick to talk so much crap about power to weight ratio, power to rate weight ratio. And it's funny because here I have the power to weight ratio is 0 0.1029 horse pounds per or a uh, horsepower per pound, right? For that's for the pro R, which is 225 horsepower weighs 2187. Now the can am comes in at 240 ho horsepower weighs 2250. So now that puts it at 0 0.1067 horsepower per pound. So what is that? That's like pretty much the same thing, in, you know, in my opinion. So mm -hmm. now can in that same category of like you have a freaking boat. So I think can is going to need every bit of 240 horsepower to move that tank. And yeah, like you said, the old can weighing 1,600 pounds, super nimble, super easy to get in and out of things. Now you're going to be in an entirely different, uh, machine, you know, it's not, it's not going to perform the same. Mm -hmm. Um, and I say smoke, I, I, I you know, I'm kind of maybe exaggerating 
we say smoke like mm-hmm. like Vin Diesel, you know, you win by an inch or a mile, <laughs> winning's winning. So, you know, if the Can Am beats the Polaris by an inch, hey, Polaris got smoked, homie. So that's what so I'm Can Am hire Vin Diesel to do a shootout. <laughs> yeah. Who wins, who we who got wins, family. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's one more variable I'm gonna throw in, uh, that no one really knows the answer to, but <clears throat> the amount of percentage of horsepower lost through a DCT versus a typical CVT. So CVT Generally, for most of these cars, right, you're losing of the the horsepower <clears throat> about 27 to 30 percent, roughly. Really, that's a lot. And I thought that the people thought when the YXZ came out, oh no, it's got a gear trans and it's not going to lose all that power. Yeah. But as percentage wise, it lost a similar amount. So I'm assuming, you know, being not an engineer by any means, that it'll be a similar percentage of power loss, or it won't be significantly more efficient getting that power from the motor through the trans to the wheels. Yeah, you know. If it is similar, like you stated, obviously all the the geek stuff that you're super good at, um, I don't. I just feel that the feel of a DCT, and they touched on it, I think, on the video when the Miller brothers were speaking on it. You know, being able to downshift, I think it would just feel more responsive. Whether you lose power or not, I'm not. I'm not sure how all that's going to translate. Uh, being that you know we haven't driven one yet, but being able to downshift on the fly is freaking awesome. I have a DCT in the same my race car, you know, so freaking boom 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 drop gears and and like you're on it versus you know uh, a cvt it just takes time to to get that belt to stretch and and to be in the in the power or whatever so i'm not sure i mean it it, it's tough um i think it's freaking solid and like a step in the right direction but i also think it's uh, it's 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 scary man i mean what what are we going to be paying for a dct replacement you know versus uh yeah a 200 hundred dollar belt and then sitting here chatting with you, I'm thinking, like, if I owned it, how many times am I going to shift? I'm already thinking, like, on our Baja ride, I'd probably run an auto. Yeah. Unless we got going aggressive. So let's say sure. I'm, I'm ripping, we're ripping through the dunes and I'm following you, and maybe there's a bunch of us and we're dicing. I'm mm-hmm. coming around a turn hot. I, you lose a lot of momentum. Then you're going to, and then yep. keep the R's up and, and try to be really aggressive. So I think that would be extremely fun. Yeah, I but agree. But on a day to day, how much would you be, do you think, shifting? Because it's a cool new feature. I think it's probably the, the most important technology that Cam's releasing in this car. Yeah. Um, but the million dollar question, how much will owners really shift? Because that really didn't play out as much, I think, as the Honda and even and the Yamaha. I thought that they yeah. would. But it didn't have, they didn't have power. Yeah, that's true. And they didn't have handling. Oh, maybe I'm not sure if the Talon handles, but I know the Yamaha is just garbage in any type of, like, bigger bump than a foot. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't think it's going to, I think it's just going to make the vehicle overall like funner. You know, it's just like when you drive a standard car, like it's not faster than an automatic car, but people feel more, more in tune with, with the vehicle, you know, while you're banging gears and stuff yeah. like that. And, and some of us like true enthusiasts, like that's the stuff that we like, you know, we want to bang gears. It's super unfortunate to me that I don't have a standard option in my race car. Cause I would definitely go that route just, mm. just to have more fun. So I think can am they do that. I mean, just to make it more fun, I think people are going to feel mentally like, oh, you know, I dropped the gear and I was out of there. But I mean, what are you going to you're going to beat me by uh, point zero zero two three fractions of a second, like because you downshifted and I had to wait for my CVT to ramp up. I mean, eh. maybe in Fast the Furious, the off road movie that comes out that they'll use that, you know, they'll show yeah. and then they'll grab a gear and take off. But yeah. Maybe not in real life. <laughs> take off with the airplane. And, you know, that's in Fast 35, though. It's coming to a theater in uh, 2047. <laughs> um, so final point I want to bring up on the whole engine drivetrain package. Um, something that's worth mentioning because we were just in Baja. 13.2 yeah. gallon fuel capacity. The only thing I want to say is hopefully it's not as big of a pig as the Pro R because the Pro R is the new pig yeah. of can it even go 80 or 90 or 100 miles on one tank Yeah, for I those think, of us that like to adventure drive. Yeah, I think the Pro R, uh, I was talking to Fred Razor, and uh, I believe he gets like 80-ish, 90, I want to say, on a freaking good day. Me and my Turbo R, that's the reason why I went Turbo R, honestly, was just consumption of fuel. And at the time, I didn't really know what the, what the Pro R was capable of. Had I remade that decision uh today i would probably go pro r at this point but anyways the triple r gets i think i get like 120 per tank so the triple r does slightly better maybe a mile or two more per gallon uh, but can am's always been super efficient you know the old model uh my cousin has one and some of my baja buddies um they 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 don't struggle with fuel you know they put that thing in eco mode even in glamis they rip around glamis they still have great power because you know can am's just put the power down um 
but I hope that that trend continues to the new car and, you know, they have a, a eco-friendly side-by-side, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, that's probably my biggest complaint with my Can-Am is that I, I wish it was easier to drive on the slow speed on the rock. So eco mode helps, but it's not as much as I'd like. Maybe with the seven speeds, they'll make that first speed super low yeah. and make the power really gradual mm-hmm. because you have six other gears. You have your Maybe your Glamis gears are going to be, you know, fourth, right, yep. fourth through sixth, maybe seventh on yep. a highway section. So that's a that's a sounds like a big gear spread. So you would think that we have a nice wide usable power band, hopefully everywhere. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, I, 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 I think Can-Am has that signs down. So like, why are they going to change it or whatever? You know, if some, something ain't broke, don't fix it. So, well, to sum it up, I think the last thing we're concerned about with a Can-Am is, is power performance. We think the shifting is probably going to be super fun. We're going to have a lot of juice. The aftermarket's going to go hog wild with the, with Can-Am like they always do. Rotax, probably the best power plant there is. Always, uh, Can-Am always delivers on the horsepower front. Probably going to be really reliable is yeah. my assumption. Yeah, I agree. Um, and, you know, I, I wanted to come over and, and you know, shoot it, shoot the sh- with you. Um, and it wasn't to, to freaking doc- talk down on Can-Am by any means. Um, they're a badass company. Obviously, they put ba- they put out amazing products and stuff like that. I just, I truly cannot believe that they made a vehicle this ugly. And it's not because I'm a Polaris fanboy or because, oh, I drove your speed. People think I'm biased because me and you have a friendship that, like, oh, he's just talking up the speed. He loves the speed. I I love the speed suspension. (laughs) We got to keep saying suspension in there, Nick, because, uh, you know, the speed has a lot of details that still need to be worked out, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're noisy in certain things, the shifting. We'll get into oh, that. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry, he's, sorry. he's already sorry, building sorry, my sorry, segue. Sorry, okay, sorry. motor, I get transmission, angry. all that. Now we're going to talk about what's what I geek out on, what Anthony is all excited <laughs> and fired up to talk about, suspension. So let's rattle off a couple numbers here. Um, you guys know I own an X3. I really like that car. Uh, it's very fun to drive. It's lightweight. It feels visceral. I love that. Like you said, me being a dirt bike guy, mountain bike guy, same thing. I love that feel, that connectedness. That's what I really enjoy about the Can-Am. How are you talking about driving a, a, a high-performance race car in, in gears versus the CVT? So I like how the Can-Am feels suspension-wise, but then I got the speed, and I realized there's a whole other echelon I agree. of performance. But anyway, <laughs> keeping it a focus on the Maverick R, um, that's what we're expecting, too. Another level up in performance. We're yeah. talking about a much heavier car, so it's going to act like a Pro-R in a speed, meaning it's heavy, uh, and it's going to go through the bumps and soak things up in a different way that the old Can-Am did because it's such a different weighing, a weight in terms yep. of the vehicle. So um, we're, we're expecting, assuming a bigger level in performance, so better geometry, better everything. Um, but Anthony has to talk about the design, man. He wants to, he, he's, he's, what do you think about it? Let's just... What's the internet been saying? Let's let's, oh, talk, let's chat. Man, I have so many fire memes on my phone, and it's crazy because this car was released yesterday evening. 12 hours ago? Yeah, and just from homo memes to tranny memes to, I don't know, what's that little puppet that you have? Gizmo, the little gremlin. Yeah. Like the front of the just, car. That was one of my I favorite. Mean, my favorite meme, by the way, is the... We'll put it up here. Uh, Super ATV trying to calculate how they're going to fit portal hubs <laughs> on it. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, I just, I, I don't even know where to begin. That's just how, like, speechless this design has me. The the front fascia, the the headlights, the grill, very Can-Am style, aggressive, good looking, man. The same with the rear end. They kind of kept similar uh, taillights, you know, the pointy, I don't even know. Design like, ID. Yeah, it looks. Cage look, looks similar, doors look similar. Yeah, uh, yeah, all that stuff looks very Can-Am-ish, solid. But these freaking front knuckles, man, like what engineer at Can-Am said, like, bro, you know what? That shit looks fire. Let's run with it. And then for then the boss signed off on it. Yeah. And the boss signed off on this thing, dude. Like, are you kidding me? I just I just don't understand it. And and, and I know it's going to work. I'm not denying that that the geometry, the design, the science behind this disgusting front end is going to work. I'm sure it's going to work. But like the rear end is not that pretty either. So I, I noticed that I was watching the video last <laughs> night with my dad. I literally left my house at night and I went, I called my dad. I was like, dad, I'm on the way. I'm going to show you the Can-Am video. And the first thing my dad, when I walked into his house, he's like, 
please tell me it's not the leaked images of those blueprints. And I was like, and I just smile and he's like, I cannot believe this shit. So we throw on the video and he even says the same thing about the rear end. He's like, there's like bars running everywhere. Like, Mm -hmm. like what the hell is this man? So I, I'm just. I'm the last s- time I saw Papa Loca, he was just smitten after riding in the he speed. Was, I he mean, was, he was speechless. He was speechless, man. The speed <laughs> is crazy. No, but um, <laughs> so I'm gonna write off some more numbers and why why I think the suspension design. So I think it's a marketing battle to who has the most suspension travel. Always. So this big bad dog's putting out 25 inches of front, 26 inches of rear travel. They've expanded the width to 77 inches. So I've seen that somewhere before on another side by side. But um, yeah, I wonder who. Regardless, we're we're at the maximum <laughs> width for racing. But I think. How do you cram that much suspension travel in a car that narrow? I mean, normally the car has got to be an off-road car, a pre-runner, a, yeah, a race car, or uh, a class 10, et cetera, to get those travel numbers. Yeah. Um, maybe for it to be king of the hill um, is kind of my guess. I mean, obviously more suspension generally is always better, but properly tuned, properly you know, geometry and all this type of thing, suspension is going to work better if it has less travel than just a bigger number. Yeah. Yeah, so exactly what you know, you hit the the what is it, the head on the nail, you hit the nail on the head. <laughs> Sorry, it's cuz I'm a ESL English second language, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, exactly, man. So it's always a competition for, you know, all more displacement, bigger turbo, I go faster, 0 to 60 times or, you know, your braking time from 100 to 0, whatever. The suspension, ground clearance is 17 inches versus What's the Polaris, 16 or 16 Yeah, it's close. I it's mean, negligible because we're all going to probably put our own tires on it anyway. Yeah, well, except unless you buy a new Can-Am, then you're stuck with 32s or unless Super ATV figures. So let's talk out. about that. Yeah, so that I think is is what's – I agree with Anthony. It's ugly. But regardless, right, if it's the baddest thing since sliced bread, we can deal with <laughs> ugly, right? Your your Polaris wasn't that pretty when it came out. Let's just it wasn't. be honest. We had that. Uh, what was it that people don't like how the speed looks? It's as beauty's an eye of the beholder. Yeah. No. W- when the Polaris first came out from that side profile, there's that red car that I think like the a Pontiac, Pontiac Aztec. Yeah, and it and it was crazy because it's like even me a Polaris guy I was like, damn, it looks like a piece of crap car. I agree, but obviously we threw a cage on it. The Turbo R Pro R came out, and you know I think they look sexy. I mean I think they look good, but in my honest opinion, the Turbo S. Uh, is I think still the best looking side by side there is. I mean, if I had the leg room and stuff in the Turbo S, I probably would have just kept mine. But I went Turbo R just for more room for my boys and for people to ride with me comfortably and stuff. But yeah, I know it's bigger is better, and and I know it's always going to be a competition for that. And um, so ugly yeah. suspension is okay. That's one thing. But what what kills me is okay. First off, the good we got the shocks mounted to the lower A arms. Yeah, which you can run a longer shock, 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 it's better geometry, it's better. But now we're still talking, it's still single shear. Yep. It looks like the chassis as well is still single yeah. shear, which is maddening to me because now most people are probably going to want to buy a double shear kit like current Can-Am owners just for that peace of mind. Yeah. Um, you're going to be going even faster in this big, heavy car. And, and, and it's heavier. Like, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> yeah, so that was that's something that is kind of crazy. You know, Can-Am, you would think that they would have learned from their previous model, you know, your model. The front end is trash on those cars. You know, you jump three tortillas and, like, <laughs> your, your freaking insurance claim on your car at that point. It's just they were trash. So you had to do bulkhead and, you lower know, A-arms. lower A-arms, all these bolts. Steering racks were... See, yeah, exactly. Passable at best. All, exactly. So all of the above to the front end, and then here they go again doing the same crap. And now you have this knuckle thing sticking out above the tire. Like, so all the people that are riding uh, woods or foresty areas, like you're used to just being able to rip and like, oh, if my tire clears it, I'm good. But now you have to worry like, damn, is that branch going to catch that knuckle and just blow that ball joint out? And, and mm-hmm. now you're just, you know, what's going on there? Is he going to rip something else out? I also didn't like the design of the shock. Like, yeah, it's mounted to the lower A-arm. But if you look at the pictures, and I actually screenshotted one from the Can-Am drop, they have these, like, big, like, plates. It's like it's like they put a 16-inch shock, but there was supposed to be, like, an 18-inch shock. Oh, yeah, because the, the gusset or the lower shock mount? Yeah, it looks really weird, and it, it just doesn't it just doesn't look right. And that, that to me, is just like, I don't get it, mm-hmm. you know? I, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that. And to kind of bring it home with the tire size, like they're saying 35s oh, yeah, do that's fit. Right. Well, maybe a deserty tire. Like I think someone said a BF Goodrich, maybe a like a tensor. Yeah. But what about like if you, you're you in Utah, you want to run some big stickies like Rockzilla's or Bore or Rock Scrapers. Um, 
that's wider, that's a bigger, meatier tire, which oh, half the options out there for the UTVs and guys yeah. that are outside of the Southwest that want to buy this car, Colorado, Utah, et cetera, um, were those were those bigger, heavier tires. It looks like even the inside of the uh, the knuckle, there's less clearance in the height of it. Yeah. And right now, this comes stock with a 30 or a 32. Everyone likes running like at least 33s. And like, yeah. honestly, everyone wants 35s. Like the, the, everyone, I want to run 35s on the speed. I got 33s and 35s. Everyone on the Pro R is running 35s and even some 37s. So yeah. it's a big letdown that you can't even run probably realistically half of the 35 inch tire options. I'm just going to say it. I think most of them won't work. Well, actually, um, I believe one of the Miller brothers replied to, I think it was, I want to say UTV Guides Instagram. Someone made a comment about 32s or 33s, and the guy, the Miller brother, which is the, the gentleman that was, you know, doing the reveal, um, he specifically said you could fit a 35-inch Rockzilla on this. Okay. So, at that point, I was like, okay, you know, so now you can fit any... Pretty much any kind of 35. If you could fit a Rockzilla 35 inch, you can probably clear true. the other tire. That, that's a big deal if it's true. Yeah. So if that's true, then okay, I'll give you that. But, you know, I still circle back to to just the ugliness, you know. And it's funny, like one of my buddies, and I'm not going to name drop him, and I have a screenshot, and I'm gonna, we're going to post a screenshot. And I came up with this analogy last night, and it had Nick rolling. So, you know, he says, uh, you know, Can-Am, once again, we're all about performance, you know, never mind the looks and you know raising the bar and i tell him you know so okay so now you want this fat chick to so like hey dude go ahead dude if that's what the stuff that you're into man you know go by all means have yourself a nice little chunky monkey and stuff like that but for me i'm gonna <laughs> stick with my polaris a nice little you know blonde white chick or something or <laughs> anyway <Side track>. <laughs> <laughs> um one point i want to bring up um Completely unrelated to that. <laughs> the the Miller brothers, these guys are the guys that rule the roost. They, they kick butt at KOH. Uh, they're the main um, athletes for Can-Am. They, and King of the Hammers, they've been racing side-by-side a, a -side against all the big dogs at 4400. And they were even testing earlier this year. They ended up not racing it when Rockzilla, when Max came out with Rockzilla 37s. Obor's got 37s coming out. But it seems like the trend is going bigger, and they tested that set up to maybe run against the 4400 class so you think is this the evolution of utvs are are, are we as we're going to be talking about 37s here next year and this new car there's no way yep. it will fit a 37 no yeah and, and i agree with that you know the polaris i think or the pro archer war i think they look my i run 35s fred runs 35s a lot pretty much it's like a super common size for the new uh pro archer war is a 35 but there are some people out there running 37s right now and damn they look good yeah with can amp absolutely zero chance that you're going to ever run a 37 you know and then it has me kind of concerned too in terms of like aftermarket uh accessories like how is hcr going to develop something that looks good to get rid of that nasty knuckle you know like how can they fabricate anything i mean obviously i'm not that creative but i'm just thinking of, the, of like if i bought a can-am today how do i make the front end look better mm -hmm. how how is someone going to design a better front end and even if they design it, like you said, without taking away the merits of the geometry that they're making better. And that's one thing that bugged me watching some of the videos they talked about. This reduces the load of this component and that component. Well, how does that translate to me as a driver? They talked about the low roll center. Okay. Yeah. I think a lot of us now, we understand certain terms like tire scrub, bump steer, right? These things we can feel, we can see. It's maybe more relatable. I mean, when we're driving as we kind of all evolve as, as, a, as a sport. But when they're talking about uh, the tie rod has a 15% less of a load. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Tie rods are $150. Yeah, that doesn't matter to me. And the same thing, like that's an irk, like the, the roll cage too looks sc scary. Let's just call it what it is. It, doesn't, it looks like the old one, which is scary. And they said we made it 15% 15 15%. stiffer. 15? It should have it's been a $45,000 car. It should be 1,500% stiffer. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the, the but... Uh, Stock cages are just junk. We we kind of I mean I guess with the exception of speed, but the Pro R cage is beef too. Yeah, I it's mean like a, it's it's significantly better than it ever was. Oh, I think maybe you unplug that. Oh no, we're good. No, you're good. Test one two. Ba bam. Uh, yeah, the Polaris. Yeah, that whatever the, the two inch roll cage or two and a quarter, whatever size. And I'm not sure of the thickness of the steel and stuff like that. But I mean we all kind of know that stock cages are not the best. So mm. you know. The cage I cancel out, but yeah, they're just they're 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 selling you the car, you know, like oh yeah, it's fifteen percent this, 
thirteen percent that, but like really, like you said, it should be a hundred percent stronger. You know, this car weighs, you know, what seven hundred pounds more than the previous model, eight hundred pounds more, whatever it may be, mm-hmm. and you did a fifteen percent stronger cage. But to me, that's that's not enough. You know, like Polaris up to size, they did a thicker material, whatever. The cage on the Polaris Pro R Trevor, they do look like strong. Yeah. Whether, whether they are or not, I'm not sure. I mean, but yeah, hopefully we'll never know. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly that. Um, yeah. But the can yeah, I think they should have. They did upgrade to the 14 mil hardware like the Pro-R, so oh, it's yeah. good to see yeah. everything's getting beefier. And they had to say, like what you said, uh, more is better or whatever. They did six lug. <laughs> Wait, and then a 16-inch wheel. Polaris five lug, can six lug. Yeah, like, okay, but I like trying. Oh, Doyle rules. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was just like, yeah, I mean, 17-inch ground clearance versus 16 and a half. Or six lug versus five lug. It's like, come on, bro. But... I mean, I, I worked for Corporate Polaris. That's how it is. I mean, these stats are very important, and they're yeah. going at each other. And I think that's why the old Can-Am had the geometry where it bottomed out to claim that number. But it bottomed out before the suspension bottomed yep. out. And that leads to me eating a lot of sand in the dunes before I even <laughs> bottomed the shocks. It's kind of a weird deal that I never experienced when I owned all the Polaris. So, um, interesting. Good final point I want to say on the suspension. Like, I'd like to see more of them explain how much better is the geometry. Robbie Gordon kind of educated the whole marketplace about oh, yeah. what he's trying to do, and that's their special sauce. I, as an owner, think that it, that is accurate. But in any other way, can trying to evolve. I bet the, the geometry is much better. Um, it is not the best looking per se, but I'm, I'm sure it'll probably handle quite a bit better. You got more travel. The car got longer too. That's one thing I want to bring up now. Yeah. It went from 102 to 108. Yeah. That's a big girl for a two-seater. Yeah. Now we're four inches longer than a pro, which is pretty magic wheelbase. So that thing's going to eat bumps, like probably even sand highway, probably any big bumps yeah. and still be fun and zippy. It's, it's going to be a fun car. It's funny because Danny and I on our way up here, we spoke about that, how much you love wheelbase. On all your videos, you're always like, oh. Wheelbase is life. Yeah, you're like, ooh, you get all girly and stuff when you talk about 108. Mm. <laughs> but, <laughs> so, yeah, like I said, I think I've said it a couple times up, uh, at this point is I know they're going to handle, man. I know they're going to perform. I know they're going to be fast. I just uh, – Got to circle back to how freaking ugly that car is, man. But. Well, since we're talking about wheelbase, um, they didn't launch a four-seater, which was a little bit of a oh, head-scratcher. Yeah, that's that's right. how it used to be. Uh, G-Life, G-Life UTV, shout out to him. Check out his YouTube channel. He posted a little snippet. I'm not sure if that was on the video or in the background. They yeah. leaked it, but they, they did show a photo of a Maverick R four-seater. four-seater yep. I, I bet, I'd bet you 20 bucks it's either coming at the Sand Show or it'll be coming for Camp Razor. Yep. Camp Can-Am Razor. Uh, maybe again, why does can do that? Yeah, but. Whole other topic, but either way, I think it's coming. But, you know, a lot of us in the Southwest, we all get four seaters. We have families. It's the only car we're gonna buy. Yep. If that car stretches, we're talking 140 That's wheelbase. That's a long car, Dude. man. I, I I don't know. I can't get over already how long the previous model. You know, they, they were so long. They look boaty. Unless you do like a you you rebuild your shocks and you get some some ground clearance up under there, they look really ugly and like mm, like a like a like a weenie dog kind of thing. You know. <laughs> Uh, back to the memes, but <laughs> so yeah, what are they gonna do now with the four seater? Is they gonna be extended that much longer? Like, you know, what what's going on there? I, I see the Pro R and the Pro R, the the back end, it does seem really excessive, you know, and and now we're just bigger and bigger and bigger. Like, how is that gonna handle? You know, I feel like yeah, it's gonna be tippy. You know, having such a long car, yeah. you're gonna be getting high centered in the dunes all the time, and obviously we're 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 speaking dunes, desert life, Southwest type stuff. But how does that translate to, like, a tight woods area, you know, when you have this freaking boat? Like, how are you going to be zooming in and out of things? Now you're basically you can only just get a two-seater. Yeah, you know, um, that's a good point to kind of talk a little bit about the interior. So, like, I am all about my wheelbase. Wheelbase is life. That's why I got a speed, 120-inch four-seater. That's pretty much perfect. But, you know, <laughs> you got to ride around the speed a little bit. But yeah. on top of the, the wheelbase, you're just in it and down low and – I feel like when the Can-Am X3 came out, a lot of people loved the ergonomics of it. And then maybe over time, it seems, I hear more of like negative comments. Like when we did our shootout, everyone loved how the speed felt. They liked the Can-Am the least. Yeah. Um, you couldn't see it, didn't feel like as, as aggressive. So I imagine that they will probably have more of a speed feel. So I want to talk about what you think it might be. And then also we have to talk about the interior because they made yeah. some much needed improvements. Finally. Yeah, so we'll, we'll touch on interior first. I mean, I'm super you know, stoked that they finally have some kind of screen. I mean, I think it's been long overdue. Um, I, 
I can't say it's better than uh, Ride Command. I love the Ride Command features, being able to link up with your group. Um, you see who, uh, whatever XYZ person is 10 miles in front of you, where they went, um, texting. It does all kinds of stuff. You know, Ride Command is, is truly an awesome system. So maybe Can-Am has some form or feature, you know, coming, or maybe it already it already comes with it. I'm not sure. But, yeah, finally a screen, so that's sweet. Um, and honestly, suspension, I just – that's what we're talking about, right? Because I totally just went blank right there. Um, just the, how you think it'll feel sitting in the car. The car is low. That's right. Is it going to feel hopefully like a speed in the, in the good sense where yeah. I ask you, I ask everybody who's ridden it, do you yeah. feel safe? Does it feel – Aggressive, low, safe. Um, does it? And and that seems like overwhelmingly people like that. Yeah. So like I think Polaris for the longest, and I think it still continues to this day. We sit kind of more upright, maybe a little more goofy, if you will. Um, we do have a lot of line of sight, like we can see a lot of what's going on in front. That's kind of personally what I like. I like to be able to easily, you know, kind of catch every angle. And I remember when I first drove a, my buddy's 2017 Can Am, a two seater. And he had uh, some triple X seats, so now you're kind of more sunken in. Man, that thing, like, the hood is, like, right here. You feel like, you know, you're driving some kind of drag car with, like, a big blower or something. You, you don't see nothing. And I know a lot of people do not like that. But I know that there's kind of a lot of people that do like that tucked away feeling. Mm -hmm. um, being in the speed after sitting in yours, I think it's, like, I mean, again, I don't want people to be like, oh, he's just on your nuts or something. But the speed does have a very awesome feel as soon as you get in. I mean, maybe it's because the seats are badass too, carbon seats and stuff. You feel, boom, like you're in a race car. It's an awesome feel. I think it's a perfect, uh, like, line of sight. Line of sight, you know, not too upright like in my Triple R, not too sunken in like in the Can Am, just right. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of curious to see how the new Can-Am is, you know, is it going to kind of mimic that or whatever to where it's kind of happy medium, you know? Did they increase the leg room because the car is six inches longer? Yeah, it's hard to true. tell. Did they need that space for the rear? Yeah. So well, the, the seats looked very similar. Yeah, they, they just kind of like churched them up a little. Yeah. Um, the, the dash does look nice and they did gloss over some of the features on the dash. So I imagine like, for instance, the biggest cool perk of ride command is a GPS as well as being able to follow your buddies and, and make dots for them. So I imagine if they had a GPS app integrated, included, they would show that. Cause yeah. me as a customer, I'm like that's added value. I don't have to go spend 1500 bucks point. on a Garmin or a, yeah. or a Lowrance. I've got that. And the touchscreen looks cool and 10 inch. I'm sure it'll integrate with audio and it's very cool to see they stepped it up in that regard. I imagine I'll have eco mode. I saw there's a new version of uh, the DPS, the power steering. I think it's just a two. Yeah, and then there's like a race feature too. Because remember, I remember the Miller brothers talking about it that he made fun of the younger brother. He's like, oh, he drives a normal or like sport and I drive in race or right. something like that. So kind of similar features that the Polaris has and stuff. But yeah, I'm kind of curious, what does this uh, screen what what is it what you know is there what other information because yeah like you said they didn't tell us about that and i feel like that would be a major selling point if yeah link up with all your can am buddies via this new operating system or you know download all these trails or whatever you know they would they would harp on that i feel but they didn't they didn't really touch on it they just said they have a 10 inch screen or nine inch screen whatever so yeah i do like though that they linked up with jail audio i mean those jail audios premium brand yeah exactly just i mean polaris with rockford so yeah that's pretty sweet you know you have some quality sound coming through straight from the factory the little storage boxes since we're talking about all oh, that type yeah, of stuff they nice. look cool yep. i mean to me it still looks like as a guy who created the b2g maybe the coolest storage system for a can i've ever even thought of <laughs> but either way um it, it looks like it's a very similar rear end where you would have to move the muffler yeah if you do have to run a spare tire it's way up there like yeah. The Beverly Hillbillies, which drives me insane. I don't want my high-performance car to have 60, 70 pounds yeah. up here because the storage box is cool. But, like, let's be honest, we're doing Baja. We need storage and we need room for a tire. Yeah. We don't want to throw the tire on the roof. So um, I'm getting all excited. I can hear the tone of my voice. But <laughs> I'm a little bummed the car got longer, and it doesn't appear that they had improved much in the storage. No. And in a perfect world, the idea of, like, the BTG was could you do long rides in a 2 seat car so I wouldn't have to buy the, the big school bus and I think that's important to a lot of people. Yeah, I like the storage unit and everything like that. All those cargo boxes that just kind of clip in nicely and stuff like that. But, you know, to be completely honest, I didn't even think about the spare tire yesterday when I was watching the video. So you bring up, bring up a valid point in that, uh, you know, you're not able to see out the back. But, you know, honestly, at this point, I think we all just kind of accept that when we go on Baja rides, you either, you know, put it in the chase truck or you put it on a roof rack 
or you cover up your rearview mirror, you know, I mean, it is unfortunate, like uh, this last Baja ride that we just did, uh, my spare tire went in the chase truck, so I was able to keep a close eye on you guys, but, you know, like my dad and pretty much every other car, uh, any kind of spare tire uh, on the market, spare tire rack, you're not going to be able to see out the back, so I think that's just something that we just kind of accept. I mean, unless you buy a B2G or you get a you speed a UTV and it's no big deal. Uh, <laughs> speed guy over here. <laughs> I kid, I kid, even though it's the truth, even though it's reality. So, um, so let's, let's, let's How kind of back to the B2G. So the spare tire goes in that big, uh, on top of it. Oh, You've never seen it, photos of it, bro? Dude, you my, drove my car with the B2G My neighbor it, had the B2G, but I don't think he had a spare tire on it. So Yeah, because all you do is pop it off, boom, then you don't have to deal with it when you go to the dunes. That was the, that's pretty But sweet. either way, um, you know, keeping weight low, I think it's something that, of course. that Robbie talked about. Yes. And um, I do think it makes sense and it adds merit. I mean, we're at a level now where we've got plenty of power. We've got great suspension. You know, in my opinion, Anthony, like – the next big thing they can do in, in the next three or four or five years is fully seal it and give us air conditioning. Yeah. We're getting high tech dashes. We've got an amazing amount of performance. Yeah. So now we're kind of getting into the nitty gritty suspension, geometry, handling. And I, I, will, I think one of the reasons the speed is so good is all the weight is it's super low. low. You're low. Yeah. The tire's low. It's a heavy car, but the, the valving so light that it eats up the little bumps and it doesn't feel weird side to side because of low CG. And that's why I'm harping on the spare tire being up yeah, to Yeah. And you know, the, the, the low center of gravity, absolutely. Like in my turbo R, they're really tippy. You know, that was the first time when I drove your car, I did one lap in, in uh, at horsepower. So I did one lap in my car just to get a feel. I kind of pushed it, kind of didn't. I was just like, let me see how my car feels. I hopped in yours. I did one turn at like 10 miles an hour, super slow. And I could instantly tell this car drives 10 times better. And my car's not stock or nothing. Uh, you know, MTS takes care of me. My shocks are hooked up and stuff like that. So mine, I would say, is one of the better handling cars that you can have. Uh, but it just didn't compare to yours. And so I can imagine, you know, you throw a spare tire on the roof or you uh, spare tire rack, you know, that's like you said, another 70 pounds, whatever, plus tools, whatever. So now you have an extra 100 pounds at the very top of your car. Like, yeah, it's going to make you feel a lot worse. So, and then with Can-Ams, I'm also curious, I didn't see, where's the gas tank? You know, when Can-Ams mm. jump, the gas tank being the front, I want to say that's why they always freaking nosedive. Can-Ams suck you think so? at jumping. I mean, think about it. What, uh, I, I do do that, but I thought maybe it's because the shock stroke is so long. But yeah, the weight could be. It's interesting to see if but they now kept you, the. Yeah, yeah, you know, you have a what? What? What's your fuel capacity? Like eleven? Thirteen. No, the the old Can Am. The old Can Am was um, like yours. Ten. Ten. Ten and a half. So what is that? That's 80, 90 pounds of fuel, mm -hmm. um, just sitting pretty much dead front of the car. So I mean, think about all that versus the Polaris has it over the rear seats. I mean, at the very bottom of the car too. So. How does that affect? So I was kind of curious on this new model, like where's the gas tank? I don't yeah, know, that's especially at 13.2. I mean, that's another, you know, 50 pounds of fuel. So if they place it again at the front, like, oh my gosh. Yeah, maybe they moved underneath the seats. That'd be yeah. good to find out. Comment below if you guys uh, have heard any information or done some digging or you know the truth. Yeah, that'd be, I'm, I'm interested in that. So um, we got to kind of put a bow on this. We got to talk about value. I love talking about that type of oh, stuff. on yeah. the Because money's money. The, the sport's getting expensive. But also, too, you know, whether people have the money or not, I think value is always important. I'm, a lot of guys are probably watching this. They've got it dialed side by side. Do they want to upgrade? Or would they upgrade? Would they come from a Polaris? Would they come from an X3? Um, the base price, $35,499. There are four trim levels. That's the entry level. 30 inch tires, QS3 shocks, nothing special. And then you go up to the Smart Shock Bad Dog, $44,299. And this is this is the price for two seaters. This is for a two seater. Yeah. So this is what $3,700 more than an Ultimate Live Valve Pro R. So pretty hefty price increase. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts initially when I, when I give you those numbers? Man, it's just crazy. You know, like back. Back to when I first met you or came across you, you know, years ago, uh, 2016 Turbo, I think, were the first cars to sell for like 20, maybe, I want to say. And I remember 20, at 20,000, people were losing their minds. Like, how are you paying 20,000? Because mind you, at that point, we had came from golf carts and rhinos that were, you know, half that. And then I remember the Turbo S, our Turbo S, is the dynamics were 30. Mm -hmm. And I remember, oh, 30, are you kidding me? <gasps> And then Pro R, Turbo R, 37, 40 grand, 44. And like now, 
you know, a, a buddy of mine on Facebook kind of gave a, a brief, like, situation of, of money. So, yeah, your machine, forty four two ninety nine, just freight, 2097 set up 1488 dog fees registration tax 3500 uh out the door approximation 50 52000 at 84 months at 7.99% with zero down $811 a month at 60 months at 3.99 zero down 958 a month 958 man $1000 a month Mm. You know, and that's not adding any accessories. You know, you go and, oh, I want the premium audio because all that stuff isn't going to come on this. I, I'm, well, I don't know. Mm. You know, you get a couple of those storage bags or, you know, the lights. I, I actually like the lights. We didn't talk about that. The little yeah. uh, cage lights, the beamers, my wife's beamer does that. You turn and the lights turn with you. So you always kind of have like light. That's freaking sweet. Honestly, I really, really, really like that. Um, but obviously, yeah, I want to comment on that in a minute. Well, after you finish your point, obviously, if you have chupacabra mirrors and you put some uh, LP fours on there, you won't need that, right? Uh, <laughs> but yeah, just at, where does it where does it end? You know, sixty thousand out the door, 50, high fifties. You know, after a couple accessories and and all said is done, that's that's wild, man. Sixty thousand. Yeah. And I was blown away. I I've said it a dozen times, especially since San Show last year. The Pro R customers, the high end customer you know, buying the high-end accessories, even, you know, spare parts from Polaris are yeah. big money. And this is the world we're playing in on the high end of this market. Um, one thing I wanted to circle back on, you talked about the cool technology of the lights. So it, it reminds me of this car as a whole and their mindset as a whole. So the lights are like rigid lights when you get going fast, the lights the will depth. pencil out. Yeah, yeah. And then the, the side mirrors that he was mentioning have lights and they will move with you turn. Now that's a really cool technology. It, it yeah. is. Um, now, is it something that people say cool, but do they need it? You know, and I think that's kind of the what encompasses the whole setup of this whole vehicle is they went really over the top engineering, and maybe in my opinion, they went too far with the engineering, the suspension design. Off roaders mm -hmm. subscribe as a whole, myself anyway, the, the kiss, right? Keep it simple, stupid. You know, the speed is remarkably simple. It's nice that I don't have to worry about bending a, a radius rod. It's uh, it's simple. It's easy. I mean, even a, a Pro-R is much simpler with the amount of, I mean, this new Can-Am's got the sway bar off of the back. Yeah. Um, we're talking about concerns of tire size. We're talking about a lot of potential concerns. And it's almost so over-engineered, almost more so for its own good. To me, as a potential customer who's looking at it on the floor, showroom floor versus the competition. Yeah, so I, I agree. I think, like you said, somebody at Can Am was like, "Let's just let's go crazy," and they over engineered the heck out of this car. I I don't understand the complexity of it. Obviously, I, I have to see it in person. But you know, like you mentioned, Polaris, you bend the tire uh, radius rod, you you swap the radius rod in you know five ten minutes if you have the appropriate tools. You know, like the back end of this Can Am thing, like with all these bars going everywhere, like how is that? I mean, it just, it just Main doesn't... radius rod still single shear, which is a bummer to say. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I saw that Fred sent me that actually. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I feel like they, I don't know, over engineered. I mean, for lack of better words or whatever, but I don't know. That's, that's part of the game. I mean, uh, how's this car going to do? How is it going to be a flop? I mean, I, I literally received uh, about a dozen DMs saying verbatim i'm a can am guy and this new car is freaking disgusting like what are they doing oh the the screen is cool you know the power is cool that thing is gross like i just i think a lot of people are kind of just like wow it's kind of mm -hmm. cut us all off guard like i don't think anybody believed those blueprints i don't think we i was hoping they it. were yeah like not, from three years ago or something you know like when i just hope that wasn't going to be the reality because it just um, that, that's another point I wanted to make over engineer. So it reminds me. So when the YXZ came out, I felt like Yamaha was listening to their short course racers and that mm. suspension design is fine for Lucas oil short course. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a very good car for that. But in the real world, it customers were not happy, rough yeah. desert, 
rock crawling, all that, none of that stuff, the, the high gearing, it would miss the mark on a lot of different levels. Yeah. So that's kind of what this reminds me of. Uh, this kind of reminds me of a Dakar car with some on-road rally car suspension technology. It's perfect if you, you know, are a rally car, you have your suspension travel, it's fine, you're never going to run bigger tires. Yep. But for a guy like me who's a wannabe rock crawler who wants to put 35s or maybe the, the thought of putting 37s because you have this car for four years, maybe that's where the market's going, taking it in different environments and all that. I, I want, you guys know me, you know the channel, I want to try to do Everything. a car that works is good everywhere. I want to yeah. have my cake and eat it too. I want the holy grail. Yeah. And that's where I kind of feel like it, maybe they listen too much to a Dakar style setup is what the suspension reminds me of. Um, hence the small tires, hence the, oh, it'll be fine. Um, I don't know, man. That's that's what I, when I look at a car, when, you know, with the, the roof scoop, that's just kind of what I see. And it's it seems like it's too much of a one-trick pony for this much money. Yeah, the the money, I mean, that's that's wild. I just, what, what's the limit? I mean, what's next? Uh, Pro Triple R for 75000 out the door. I mean, at this point, I... I'm just looking at sand cars, you know. I mean, that's that's a lot of money um, for something that doesn't really suit me. Uh, being down here, I, I, I like to fit 35s. I want to. We're talking about going to Utah. I definitely would love to try 37s, even just to see how it looks, just to see what it does. You know, throw some big old tires on that thing and and go rip around. And I feel like I'm very limited on a on a new Can Am. But you know, I want to kind of touch back and just say like the. Uh, I think it's cool, uh, a step in the right direction. I think they do have a lot of good stuff. The DCT is badass. At the same time, I'm, obviously, I'd be kind of fearful of that. But um, If there's a um, reliability issue in the expensive versus just a $200 bill. Not even you know? just reliability. Just, I mean, stuff breaks. Shit happens, you know, regardless of who you are. You know, Brandon Sims runs, he's top tier athlete in, in this industry and you know he breaks stuff from the best of the best i mean you know mm. so it, it, it just happens so what happens when you break this training you know yeah it's badass downshifting power on the fly all these amazing qualities that you know can am continues to to put out but uh it's kind of it's kind of scary i'm kind of i'm kind of scared you know I'll, if you had a new can am I mean, yeah, of course I'm going to go drive it. I like driving your cars, but... Um, <laughs> you see how he did that? He already invited himself to drive a car I, I don't even have It's because the squeaky wheel gets the grease, guys. Duh, <laughs> like, closed mouths don't get fed. So with Nick, I say, what's up, Nick? Dude, damn. You and then 10 seconds before that, he's like, I'm ready to go jump the canal, bro. I'm ready to go do it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm not going to do that in your car, Nick. Come on, dude. But, yeah, um, <laughs> I don't know. We'll see We'll see how this Can-Am plays out. I'm... Obviously, super excited for Camp Razor, even though they haven't officially released the dates yet. But mm -hmm. um, we all kind of know it's going to be that 27th, 28th time frame or whatever that yep. that is at the end of October. So, and then Can Am does their little little cute Can Am camp thing there. I don't know why they do it that weekend, but whatever. It is what it is. Uh, good business, I guess, right? You know. Yeah, I mean, you know, you have weekend. to be out there. I think this. Camp Razor is going to be a big one. Uh, we're going to finally see probably dozens and dozens at least of speeds running around in the wild. Yeah. And the speed and the new Can-Am have to look good out there, be reliable, rip up the hill, be fun. And Can you and imagine if your car breaks, like, hitting the whoops on Olds and the speed, dude? On Saturday oh at Olds gosh, or at the drags dude. if I you blow a the... belt at 4.30 on Friday. <laughs> You'd be the most trendy dude ever, dude. You, Board Manville is gonna have a freaking hard on all weekend, dude. That guy loves you, man. I think he has a picture of you like on his wall, and like he just. Yeah, we should go to Board Manville. We yeah. should we should go meet this guy in Let's real go. life if he exists. And, uh... Yeah, I wonder who he is, man. I would love to. No, but I him. think uh, <laughs> you know I say that uh, going to this that weekend, but I think if the car rips. It'll justify the price. I think there's a lot of unknowns. I think we're both apprehensive. I think we both thought they were going to go in a different direction. But Can-Am's Can-Am. We expect a lot out of them. We expect a lot out of Polaris. Honestly, I expect the, the most out of Polaris. People probably think I'm a little more biased to speed because I look at the industry like Polaris is like your oldest son. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's, he's off in college. He's responsible. You expect dude. more out of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little brother, he he's maybe has to he's fumble cute. the ball. Yeah. I think that's what, kind of what speed is, and that's how yeah. I, what I think, and maybe people think I'm biased for that. But I think we're the way we're talking about it, maybe it might, you listen to this whole thing, and you're like, man, these guys are a little concerned. They're like being a little bit hard on Can-Am. Well, you know, they've, they've done so many, many amazing things, many amazing vehicles. I mean, not just with side-by-side -side ATV, um, snowmobiles, all that stuff. But we're we expect also hard these two, on all the vehicles, too, though. 
yeah. you know, to be fair. The internet is to all of you guys. Yeah, obviously. exactly. You guys, so, you guys are going to be in the comments just like, oh, that's... disagreeing with everything we say anyway. Exactly. So, <laughs> you know, we, regardless of what we spoke of today, be it Polaris, Speed, Kawasaki, whatever manufacturer, there's, it's just, we're hard on everything. You know, we're, we're, we're enthusiasts. We want to see these things succeed. We want to see where this sport goes. Obviously, it's evolving, like, crazily at this point. Um so yeah, we're we're gonna dissect these things. We're gonna hit on the on the negatives, you know, touch on the pros, whatever. But um, we were like that with the Pro R Turbo R two, like, oh my god, you know, this and that, and look how long, and I can't believe this. It looks like that Pontiac. The speed, obviously, there's there's a million things about speed, but I mean, whatever. Uh, <laughs> and and now Ken Am, welcome. Ken Am has entered the chat, so. And that's why this is going to make this desert season exciting. We talk about yeah. glamorous just because there's so many eyeballs out there. Yeah. And I think if your car runs good out there, you'd be good. So yeah. it's going to be exciting desert season. Yeah, car, um, Someone's going to break. Someone's going to roll. There's going to be drama. There always is. Yeah. But at the tail of the tape, like whether you don't believe me about the speed, you're going to see hundreds of people owning them. Hundreds of people are going to buy these new Can-Am, probably maybe thousands. And then we're going to see how they run in the wild. I'll never yeah. forget the first time I was on Glamis, I was working for Polaris. Uh, and then the X3 had come out. Immediately like when I saw the video, I saw I thought this car is a problem. This car looks sick. Yeah, it's a problem. Yeah, it's a player simply right here. They go, and then out of the corner of my eye, I'm like hanging out at Olds, and I see something like jamming up Olds, and I'm thinking, oh, it's a sand car. And it's I looked over, I'm like, it was a side by side, ate those bumps at the bottom, yeah. and I think Olds is such a good look because you have bumps, you have to see how how well the car can and handle those the bumps. Are huge. And then hit the speed. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that's why I think it's important that any car has to look good out there in front of all those people. Yep. It'll be successful. And, and if not, the Can-Am or the Speed, you know, it'll, it'll only bode well for Polaris. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to venture off and say that your Speed is going to handle it. I don't know engine-wise or other details that the car needs. <laughs> You're already but, making disclaimers. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but the suspension, I mean, it's... It's freaking amazing. That car is crazy how dialed it feels. So I'm pretty sure you're going to have no trouble hauling ass up olds. But yeah, I mean, uh, I'm very anxious to see Can-Am and what they do, how they do, I should say. Um, and just be ready for a war of memes. I mean, you know, it's going to happen. I mean, even me, you know, shit happens to me too. It, it, it happens to everybody, you know, Ford, Chevy, Dodge, whatever. Everything has issues, but you know how... Yeah. How us, we like to pick on like, oh, look, Polaris, if I'm a Can-Am guy, you know, oh, look, I can't believe they did that. That's so silly. Kind of like in Baja when he was ragging on me because my front axle pulled out the first day. And then my ball And joint. then he lost a ball joint because, you know. You know, but touching on ball joints, dude, I, I, I think manufacturers build these cars with ball joints because, okay, say they do a, a rod end or a... a taper. A, no, but say, okay. No. Shareholder hey, profit. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. <laughs> they put a uni ball, right, or a, or a rod in, whatever, something way stronger that's not going to break. What's the next weakest point, right? So now you're cracking a frame instead of popping a ball joint. Now you're breaking, like, shearing your tabs off or, or out of your frame because you have uni ball arms. You know, so maybe they put ball joints in place because think about how simple a ball joint is. You know, that shit breaks off. I mean, there was a lot of beer drank by the time it took to get Nick, your ball there joint. There was a lot, lot of tools. A lot of beer drinking when your car of... messed up. And then it happened twice, of... Nick. <laughs> your car happened twice now. Come on. What he's saying is the axle pulled out. The whole crew got me fixed, and it only lasts about 15 miles, so we pulled it out. So 15 miles, Nick? You're being know. generous. Did dude. the axle la uh, last <laughs> it before it went out again? Yeah, I feel like we had just gotten going. And you never mentioned how your axle popped out. We pulled into the hotel, and you put it the car in reverse, yeah. and your axle popped out. Like my ball joint didn't break as I got on the on the freeway. My axle broke, or my ball joint broke because I was probably doing like 120. To be yeah, honest, right? <laughs> I will say that the last part of the first day that we had a long pull, we did over 200 plus miles. I was following Anthony and his dad, and we were jamming through some rough that race course stuff, crazy. like uh, down by Irindira or yeah. below Colonet, and uh, yep. I was hammering the car. Yeah, because I was following you, and you, you're no slouch, and we were going good. Yeah, and, um, I was actually shocked. Beating I, on the cars. <laughs> I was super shocked, man. I saw my dad's in, in my rearview mirror, my, his headlights, and I was like, damn, my dad's tailgating me? Like, okay, let's get it. Because that's when I kind of know he wants to play. And then I look over in my, my driver's side mirror, and like, Mr. Speed. Okay, so I was like, damn, let's get it. So, yeah, that section is so freaking gnarly. And I don't think, I mean, I looked at the GoPro videos, and you could see sometimes my tires just 
freaking getting beat on. But until people experience that specific section, they don't know. They yeah. can't tell how freaking crazy that. How many is. races have been run through and they've yeah. never prepped it? And and we were doing fifty. Uh, I don't know. Uh, After two hundred miles in the first day, and we still had another two fifty to go. Yeah, we hauled so that really that like section. you you want to have fun, but you got to be safe, kind of yeah, or conservative yeah, a little yeah. bit, but. That little section, you we know, my it my ball joints lasted the whole time. Oh wait, I don't have ball joints. Uh, my axles lasted the whole weekend, so I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Actually, his axle it. pulled out because of his ball joint. Oh, it did. Uh, I popped it back in and it yeah, worked. It did. I wasn't in two wheel drive. I wasn't full wheel drive. You know, I was like, driving like Robbie Gordon, two wheel drive in Baja, son. Oh my gosh! Just because he had <laughs> Robbie Gordon followed us from like uh, about fifty miles behind in a helicopter because he wanted to make sure nobody misspoke of speed, and you know he has sicarios and stuff people to take care of us down there in mexico so we weren't able to speak ill of speed because uh, we knew robbie's watching well i can't wait for all of you guys <laughs> that are buying the new maverick car because i'm sure thousands of you guys have already put down deposits can't wait yeah. to see him in the dunes baja on the rocks i want to see him everywhere i'm sure can am's going to be continuing with with their marketing release of demo rides all that type of stuff so Thanks for coming and chatting. It was super fun. Yeah, um, man. Thanks for having me. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys like the content, of course, like and subscribe. Comment below what you think about the Maverick car. Um, quick speed round real quick. If you had a dialed X3, would you sell it and get the Maverick car? Yes or no? No. If you had a Pro-R, would you sell it and get a Maverick? Absolutely not. I wouldn't even sell it for a speed. So don't even ask me that question. Okay. Pro-R so. is still top dog, homie. Sorry. Yeah, I think the Pro-R is, yeah, until the speed proved its reliability exactly. with the speed key. Exactly. Um, I'm very curious to see that. Yeah. Um, man, I don't know. I think, if, like, yeah, maybe in a year, Robbie dials in all these little details and stuff. I think Speed has a runner. Can Am is just not it for me. Just purely looks. Everything else can be 10 out of 10. But, I mean, you can't put makeup on a pig, you know, like. <laughs> lipstick. Yeah. Or so there you have it. Anthony's yeah. not buying it just because it's, <laughs> it's ugly. It's ugly. It's That's ugly. That's the only reason. It's going to be badass. I'm sure it is. It's going to handle. It's going to be fast. Whatever, dude. You're still ugly. You still like dudes if you drive a Can-Am. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm open-minded to it. Comment below if you think I should sell my Can-Am and get it. Or 2C Pro R would probably be a great car. I'd love to do the Nora, oh, yeah. the Nora race. So doing the Nora and the Speed would be cool. Or a 2C Pro R I think would be fun. Um, that's kind of an aspiration I have for maybe next year, maybe the year after. Um, yeah. You guys know I like to do all different types of riding. So it would be cool to maybe develop a B2G and other products for the new Maverick R. But I'm curious how they're going to sell, how many we're going to see out there this season. Yeah, let's see if it's even worth it to invest your time and efforts into doing something like that. But honestly, the back end looks rather similar. You know, like you, you mentioned about doing an exhaust and stuff, the tail lights, that little bed that they kind of do, the Ken ms have. So maybe it's actually maybe just minor tweaks to your current B2G and, you know, you can continue to sell into the new, uh, for the new cars. So. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll check them out at Glamis or whenever they hit the streets. When are they supposed to? Drive? I saw Can Am responding that they were going to ship cars mid September. So fifteenth uh, yeah. is a San Show, so I'm guaranteed they'll have them on the ground. Oh there. yeah, it'll be a big draw. Come to the San Show. Yep. Come by Chupacabra booth. Anthony will be signing autographs. Mm -hmm. We'll come check out the Can. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll get to shoot a video of sitting in it. Yeah, see it in real life. I think you guys like to see it. I'd like to see it and see yeah, how it feels. Too. Did they make it roomier? Uh, it could be a little roomier leg wise. My X3. Uh, one of my employees, he's a big dude, and he wishes it was a little bit longer. Oh, I could, but you're a tall dude, and you fit fine. You're six foot. Yeah, three, I thought it felt five. better than the old Turbo West, but I could, I oh, could yeah. see about a couple more inches of legroom wouldn't hurt. Yeah. See, I mean, most Mexicans, we're short, so we're good with, with any kind of space, to be honest. I mean, we're average as 5'10", 5'11", so I was good in my Turbo S. I'm good, good in my Turbo R. I felt the Can-Am legroom was fine, especially driving yours, too. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I guess, you know, you can always have more, right? So, yeah. whatever. <laughs> Some big, big boys out there. So, yeah. thank you guys for watching. Thanks, Anthony, for making the trip. If you guys like the content, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace, homies. Good. Woo.